Tonight, God will teach you a couple of things. We will have an interesting service, and then we're going to pray for you. When you pray, you should pray as if God will answer your prayer. And you should pray as if God is answering your prayer. Most of the time, we are so used that our prayers do not get answered that we pray without faith. Many people pray without faith. They pray because we need to pray, but they don't pray for their, answer, for their prayer to be answered. When you pray, you need to believe that God is answering your prayer now. That says that in Mark 11. When you pray, when you stand praying, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Interesting things. Amen. I'm going to teach you a couple of those things. Hallelujah. You need to pray as if God is answering your prayer. Because if you pray that maybe God will answer my prayer, then we're not going to move the mountains that need to be moved. Amen. But as, in, as wickedness is increasing on the earth, the love of many people will grow cold, and your prayer life will increase, and your prayer life will face more opposition than in the past. Sit a minute, I tell you these things. We will pray, we're going to worship now. Amen. Keep yourself ready there. Thank you. Because Jesus said in Matthew 24, and you can get it ready that we can read that, please, guys. In Matthew 24, it says, Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Now, I tell you today, wickedness is rapidly increasing on the earth. When I was a child, it was an abomination to be homosexual. Today, it is quite normal in many countries, even in our country. When I was a child, it was a crime. When I was a child, pornography was a crime. When they got pornography with a person, he, he got locked up. When he got caught uh, being a homosexual, he was locked up. Today, it's normal. I mean, pornography, you can get any place. And when I was a child, gambling was against the law. They could lock you up. Just to prove to you that wickedness is increasing. So either the Bible says in the last days, they will call good bad. And they will call bad good. The other day in America, a man got a, a, a purple star, which is the highest reward in the military in the USA. For coming forward and admitting that it's actually, and this was a big football player, coming forward and admit that he was actually, I, I need to get it right because my mind cannot work these things through, that he was a man, that it was a woman in a man's body. And he got this cross from Obama for coming forward that he is now actually a woman in a man's body. And he went for a sex change. And he's now famous for that. So what, what do you get? The good, they, the bad, they call good. The man got a purple star, which soldiers for bravery get in warfare. This man got it because he admitted that he's actually a woman in a man's body. But I can tell you tonight that God doesn't make mistakes when he creates humans. And he knew beforehand who is going to create a man and who is he going to create a woman. So those people, the whole, I, I told you long ago that the USA is already long ago in huge trouble. That mighty nation is going to fall very hard. That mighty nation, this one nation, I love those people so much, but they're going to fall so hard. And the last days, they call bad, good. God said, when a man lay with another man, as if, as the same way that a man lay with a woman, that is an abomination to God. But the world called it to do good. To, to, they call it good. They even give a man a medal, a purple star. 
the highest reward for bravery in the USA military. Now, okay, what I want to say to you is what Jesus said in Matthew 24. Because of this increase of wickedness, your prayer find it more tough to move the mountain. So when you, if you prayed 50 years ago, you prayed a simple prayer, it will be answered because the opposition was not that great. Today, you need to pray far stronger for the same thing because the opposition increased because of the increase of wickedness. In other words, the enemy won a great deal of ground. I speak about Satan. And if you don't know it, World War III is already long ago on the go. People, they reason and they say, oh, World War II this and oh, World War III this and World War III this is on the on 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 go long ago already. And you don't even know it. Because it says in Thessalonians, the Antichrist will fully reveal him when he who was standing and restraining him is taken out of the way. And the one who restrained him is the conservative man. What is a conservative man? I don't speak to you about politics, I speak to you about the Bible. What's a conservative man? A conservative man is a man who believes the Bible and everything in the Bible. And the belief of conservative man believes that we need to live by this Bible. Everything that we do, we need to raise our kids according to this Bible. And everything that is not in line with this Bible should be rejected. And everything that is in the Bible should be accepted. Plain, straight, very short, what a conservative man is. Satan's aim long ago, it was written up in the Illuminati writings. They need to get rid, rid of the conservative man on the earth. Because a conservative man does not fall for the funny things that's not in line with God's word. Today, the conservative man, man is getting less and less and less and less on this planet. Even in the USA, everywhere on the earth, the conservative man is getting less, they're getting less, they less, every year they're getting less. They disappear. And it's the conservative man that restrained the Antichrist from fully, fully manifesting himself. When the conservative man is out of the way. And that's why the Antichrist plan is things very, very nice. Through political figures, people behind the scenes. And you go and look and all the people who's pushing these things are Jews. Sounds like I got something against Jews. No, I loved life very much. And I myself is from Jewish background. But the Antichrist will be a Jew. He will be a Jew. And his government will also be Jews. And today all the people that push these things, they are Jews. And I want to say you feel almost like powerless, but pray. Because it's taking over the whole world without anyone noticing it. But it's here. And, um, but Jesus said something very, very important. When you see these things, lift up your head. For your, your redemption is drawing near. Give God a hand. Amen. What is your redemption? Your redemption is the second coming of Jesus. He came for the first time. That was our first, our first great, first taste of the great redemption of Jesus Christ who came to the earth, who paid the price for us, who showed us how we should live. Amen. According to the Bible, hallelujah, give God a hand for your Bible. According to the Bible, and... Um, People got discipled across the world, and Christianity took quite its root in many countries and was powerful, etc., etc. And now the aim of the devil is again to uproot Christianity and to decrease Christianity. But we are waiting for the second coming of Jesus, and that's going to be amazing as well. Hallelujah. So when you see all these things Jesus said, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Amen. So you see, you look at Thessalonians, you see the things are coming. Many people will say, what, Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, I tell you, conservative people, and especially conservative men, is getting less and less. And your Bible says in Thessalonians, when he, it's not a she, when he is taken out of the way, he who restrained the Antichrist 
and stopping him from fully manifesting himself is taken out of the way. Then, the Antichrist will fully reveal in himself a great political figure which everyone is going to like. And people are going to like him. Even the Christians are going to fall for him. The Bible says that even the elect will be deceived. Even the elect will be deceived and he will come even with false signs and wonders. And many Christians is going to say, this is a great prophet. And it's not so difficult to deceive Christians. I've seen that through the years. It's not difficult. That's why the Christian church today, today need very sound preachers to teach them the truth of God's word so they cannot easily be deceived. Because Christians through the years, I've seen it, Get so easily deceived, so easily, so easily. And that's why there's some great need of very, very sound Bible teachers that teach people the Bible as the, as the Bible is, not something with it, the Bible. And even the different translations today that you get, it's even they are deceiving. In Afrikaans, the meest accurate, even the meest accurate vertaling, but you are the kan most one of the most accurate translations you can get. Together with, the new, together with the King James, and obviously the New King James, is the Afrikaans overtaling. Nie die nieuwe vertaling nie. I'll show you one proof about that. It says in Mark 16, it says, for those, or that it says, um, the way to be saved is, repent, if, 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 those, if people believe, and is baptized, they will be saved. That's what some translations are saying. Most translations are saying that. But the, uh, the overtaling Afrikaans, weet you what say, hey, gaan vergelijk om met die nieuwe vertaling. En ek hou daarvan om met die mense te praat, wat stream, word kwaad vir my, en maak een paar samen, en sê, geen nie om nie. Die overtaling sê dit, vir hulle wat bekeer, hulle wat bekeer, en hulle laat doop, sal gereed word. Maar die nieuwe vertaling sê dit, as jy glo en gedoop is, sal jy gereed word. Dat is een groot verskil, gedoop is en jou laat doop. Een babaatje kan nie laat doop nie, Johan. Douglas, kan een babaatje om laat doop? Douglas, ek vraag jou, dit is onmoendlik, vir die wat glo, en hulle laat doop, sal gereed word. Maar die nieuwe vertaling sê, hulle wat gloe en gedoop is, en die sinspeel gedoop is as kinders, besprinkel as kinders. That by itself is a huge deception. That's why I want to encourage the Afrikaans people, go and read your overtaling. Krijg veel ene. 53 en 33. En jy sal nie makkelijke misleiding gaan nie. And the, the other guys, that read English Bibles, and we will look up for the, the Sutu Bibles, etc., etc., and the other Bibles, but I tell you, the English Bible, the King James, and the New King James, amazing translations, very accurate, uh, translated out of the original Hebrew and, uh, um, Hebrew and Greek. Amen. Amen. But God is good. Praise God that we can see these things. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. So the original translation says saying, and what the, the old Afrikaans is one of the only ones that say this. Hulle wat gloe, hy wat toch gloe en om laat doop. In other words, you can trans translate it into English, and you don't easily get it in the, trans the other translations. You believe and get himself baptized, will be saved. I love that overtaling Afrikaans. Give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah, the reason why he's so accurate, like the King James, they didn't copy another translation. They translated that old vertaling Afrikaans, direct out of the original languages. They didn't make a mistake. Give God a hand for good translations. Amen. And I get excited about these things because I know how, my, how easily Christians get deceived. There is a small twist in the interpretation of that scripture. But go and study it and you'll see where you end miles away from the truth if you read the wrong translation. Amen. Very important to be baptized. And therefore many people believe that child sprinkling is baptism. It's unbelievable. Because even in Afrikaans, 
die woord doop kan onmoendlik beteken om een paar druppels op een kindse kop te gooi. Die woord doop beteken om binnen in te gaan. Baptizo means to go into. That's what it means. So the Bible clearly states to us that we need to repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of our sins. Give God a hand. Amen. You need to repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Now what can water do, pastor? Come on, what is so spiritual about water? Well, a couple of things. TV Joshua, Nigeria, and me here, yeah, we give people water, and it's anointed water. Many other churches, even false churches, use water. I know that as well. But Jesus said, there's three that be witness on the earth. The Spirit, the blood of Jesus, and water. And Jesus said, for those who believe, streams of living water will gush forth from my innermost being. And Egypt, we take it back as Egypt, importance of water. Um, and Egypt, when they was putting the blood on the doorpost, they did it with a certain plant that's called the hyssop, which is almost like you, you apply the, the blood to the doorpost, but blood is very thick, especially when it's not directly coming directly, it's, it's not fresh. It's very thick. So they thinned, they made thinner and applyable the blood by adding water. But that was not coincidence. It was planned by God. Because water always, and you cannot argue the point, represent eternal life. Give God a hand for eternal life. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Eternal life. So when I get baptized into the water, I get baptized into Jesus Christ. Because the water in this pool represents Jesus and his eternal life. Because Jesus is your eternal life. Say to the Jesus is my eternal life. Now you can understand why is it so important and why is it so powerful when I baptize you into this water, into this water. I don't take a couple of drops and put it on you, but even if I put this on you, you will, you will feel it and you will know it. But going into the water means you go into Jesus because the water represents eternal life and you know that nothing can exist without water. So water is an earthly representative of eternal life. Like Jesus said, if anyone believe in my name, streams from living water, streams of living water will gush forth, flow forth from his innermost being. Hulle wat in my gloe strome van levende water sal vanuit hulle binneste voort vloe. Hoekom noem my water? Want water verteenwoordig ewige lewe. Water represents eternal life, always. Amen. So this water represents eternal life. And Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So Jesus is your life. Jesus is eternal life. So when you get baptized into this earthly representative that represents Jesus, you get baptized into Jesus who is your eternal life, and this water represents eternal life, then you've got eternal life because your sins are forgiven you. Give God a hand. Amen. Getting baptized into water is a very important point. You get baptized within, into Jesus. Into Jesus. You become one with him. When you enter a baptism pool, you become one with Jesus. You put yourself in the water, under the water, and when you go into the water, you are one with the water. Water is something amazing. When you enter the water, you go in. I'm a diver. When you dive and you go into the sea or you go into a river or a dam or anything, the water swallow you. You're now one with the water. Amen? So you're part of the water. When you get baptized into water like this, you get baptized into Jesus. Then you're one with Jesus. You're one in his victory life. You're one with the life which he lived, and the life that he lived was victory over Satan and victory over sin. And that victory becomes yours because baptism is an act of faith. Amen. Faith is always an action. Faith is never a dead thing. Dead thing. Faith is always an amazing, powerful action. Action. Faith without action is dead. It says that in the book of ja Yaakov, Jacobo, Jacobus. If my faith does not accompany action, it is dead. So, when I want to pray for someone to be healed, my Bible says to me, I need to lay my hands on the sick. And they will recover. Not maybe, they will. But the point is, do we still believe that? Well, I believe it because it happens many times to me, but I need to tell you this. I want it more often to happen. Pray that God will cause us faith to grow. Pray, Lord God, I believe. Help my unbelief. 
I believe, let my faith increase. Increase my faith, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So everything about faith is great action. Always. So when my Bible says to me, in the book of Yaakov, Yaakov, if anyone among you is sick, let the elders lay hands on him, anoint him with oil, and the prayer of faith will heal the sick person. Amen. Why applying the oil? Because like the water, the oil that we use, olive oil, is a representative of the anointing that God the Father placed on Jesus. Anointing. Afrikaans. This dissolving. We live early as a vertegenwoordiger van die solving wat God die Vader op Jesus Christus gesit het. Jesus is die gesolfde. Jesus is the anointed one. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the anointed one. And all the anointings in all the churches across, around the globe that you experience in services when people get healed and people get delivered, all that anointing comes from one single man. His name in Hebrew is Yeshua. I'll give him a great hand. Amen. His name in English is Jesus. His name in Africa is Jesus. His name in Portuguese and Spanish is Jesus. All the anointings on the earth, the anointing that is here tonight, the anointing is going to touch you tonight, comes from one man. And it says in the book of Acts how God the Father anointed Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Spirit and power. And he went about doing good. And he's the author of my faith. He went about doing good. Say to guys, doing good. Doing good. Some people think faith is sitting, doing nothing. That's dead. My faith is not dead. My faith calls me to act upon God's word. That is true faith, to act upon what God is saying. If God says to me, lay your hands on the sick and they will be healed. I don't try to believe, I must believe him. We try many times, yeah, we, we used to pray, let us pray, because the Bible says we need to pray, pray. But you don't expect the guy to be healed. Many people. And the guy doesn't expect to be healed. We just do the thing that the Bible says. Hey, when you pray, you need to believe it's going to be. Amen. And my faith is working, but I wish it will work more. Lord, I need more faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, increase my faith, please. Amen. Amen. The way reason I know my faith is working is that it works every time. Well, yesterday, Isabel's grandson, her daughter found a, the, something out of the child, and the child stopped breathing. And she was panicking. And she phoned the mother, and she was racing for the hospital. And the, and the child's father was also there, and Isabel phoned us, and SMS us, and WhatsApp us. And I heard, when I was there to swimming pool, and I heard it, I shouted to God, God, please help! In Jesus' name. Marie was there, and the Runel was there. I shouted to the Lord. And immediately the Lord said to me, I heard him very clearly, the child will be fine. But that doesn't mean you should stop praying. When you hear anything from God, you should even pray the more. Amen. So again, um, I found Isabel after, after a while, and I said to her, Isabel, and I, and I sent her a voice message, and um, she phoned me, and we prayed. And as we prayed, you ask her, as we prayed, as we prayed, the child started to breathe. Give God a hand. Amen. <laughs> you can ask Is Isabel. As we prayed, the child started to breathe. Give God a great hand. Come on, man. And there was a carrot in the child's throat. That was the problem. A carrot can cause a lot of problem, I tell you. You need to be careful with the small ones. They put anything in their mouth and it ends up in their throat and it's trouble. Amen. But we pray for them for grace. Amen. Father, we pray for all the small ones for grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All the small ones for grace. Amen, Paul. Amen. I know. God answered my prayer. 
Now, when I say my prayer, I need to say my prayer. You need to say my prayer. I know a couple of people prayed with me, with us. I know. Isabel prayed. Her daughter was panicking, but I suppose she prayed. I suppose the father was panicking, but I suppose he prayed. But we prayed. And when I say that I believe God is answering my prayer, and my prayer did the thing, then I believe that my prayer that I pray, God answered my prayer. When I pray a prayer, and 50 others prayed with me, or 100 other people prayed with me, that's good. But I need to believe that my prayer is moving the mountain. Amen? Otherwise, your faith will never develop. You need to believe that God's answering your prayer, and that your prayer moved the mountain. So you should pray in that way. And I told to people the other day, but it's a great testimony. I've, my life is full of testimonies. Yours as well. Amen. Yours as well. And I told you about the fight, the heavyweight boxing champion, Tyson Fury, because he stood so definitely and so clear for Jesus Christ. And he confessed Jesus so clearly as Lord. Not a mixture of Jesus Christ. And his opponent, who was at that point of time the he world heavyweight champion, believed in ancestral worship. And ancestral worship, they believed that his spirits come in and help them. And they had, if you look at the face off on YouTube, you can look for yourself. I posted once upon a time, I posted on Facebook, I tell you, it's a witness. And Tyson Fury said to him, if, if Jesus is for me, who can be against me? And he made a clear confession about Jesus. And they were, they were actually very, very heated around the collar, the two of them. And when the battle came, the first one and the second one, the first one at the, in the last round, the, the champion the, um, Wilder knocked the Christian Tyson Fury out. Puff in the last round. Yo, I tell you. And as it happened, my son was sitting next to me. And as he knocked the canvas, and he was laying there, and I thought it's going to be over, and everyone said, it's over, it's over. I jumped up, and I shouted at the top of my voice, stop. Stand up in Jesus' name. Because my Lord's name was at stake. He confessed Jesus and the name of Jesus was at stake. And I sh shouted, jumped up next to my son and I shouted, in the name of Jesus, stand up. And as I said, stand up. He stood up. Give God a hand. Amen. Amen. My son looked at me. He said, Pa, your prayer raised that man from the canvas. I said, I know. And you can argue, many other people prayed. I tell you, I know when people look at boxing, most of them don't pray. Come on, they don't pray. But I do pray. And I do not know if there were other people who prayed, but I know that my prayer, I know that I know my prayer lifted Tyson Fury, the Christian who confessed Jesus openly to the world, that my prayer in Jesus' name raised him from the canvas. I know it. And my son knows it so well. It was a great witness unto him. His dad's prayers is getting answered. And we need, to have, have, we need to be proof to our young ones and our children that our God do answer our prayers. Because if you pray and your prayer don't get answered, what must your child think? Huh? What must your child think? Oh, this God says we need to pray, but it doesn't seem to help. Uh, I'll pray, but I, I would rather go to the doctor when I'm sick. Maybe the doctor. I believe in going to doctors, okay? But I believe first prayer. Number one, you pray. Number one, in everything you pray. You struck trouble, number one, you pray. If you struck trouble, they hijack you, number one, you pray. Then you can phone the cops, etc., etc. But number one, you pray. When you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be safe. That's what my Bible says. I'm not going to believe anything else. So I know that my prayer, it answered. It was proven yesterday. Give God a hand. Amen. Ah, and many other times, Many other times. Now, I don't say to you, wow, look at me. My faith is great. I'm actually very weak. I'm actually very, very weak. But I believe in a great God and His Son, Jesus Christ. And He will not fail us. He will not let us down. Sometimes it really looks like we're going to lose. I know. I know the feeling. I know the experience. Sometimes think, you think you're gone. You think I'm down and gone. Who's going to help me out here? But if you call upon the name of Jesus, he will never let you down because those who hope in the Lord will not be disappointed. God will vindicate you. He will not let you down because he's God. He cannot let you down. He cannot. Because he's not a liar. And he said, if you ask anything in his name, he will do it for us. 
and you've got faith, you've got to believe that your prayer is working. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray, Lord God, thank you for grace. In Jesus' name. Get the scripture, Mark 11. When you pray, believe that you received it, and it will be yours. When you pray, believe that you receive it, and it will be yours. You've got the guts, spiritual guts. I don't speak about manly guts. You've got a spiritual substance. Let me rather say this. You've got a spiritual substance to believe this. Well, I've got to prove that mine is working. Yours also should work. Yesterday was a proof. And some looking now, they will say, oh, he's boasting. I don't care what you say. The honor belongs to my God always. Give him a great hand. Amen. When I pray, actually why I pray, I feel so helpless. I don't feel strong when I pray. I feel so helpless, and that's why I pray. I don't pray because I feel strong. If I was strong or I felt strong, why would I pray? But I pray because I feel so helpless and so weak. And that's why I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Prayer is for those who are weak. Prayer is for those who know that they cannot be victorious without Him, Jesus Christ. The Father in Jesus, His Son. Prayer is for those. The Bible says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they will see God. I am poor in spirit, me. I'm not a strong man. I'm, I'm not a religious man, so by the way, I'm not. But I'm a guy that believes in Jesus. There's a huge difference in believing in Jesus and being religious. Blessed are the poor in spirit. They will see God. I'm poor in spirit, man. I need him every day. I'm weak. I'm weak. And that's why I pray. Because I'm weak. And many times I feel helpless. Sometimes I think about world events. I feel so helpless. God, what can I do about this? And then I pray, Lord, please help. I say this because I'm weak. I cannot change my circumstances. But you can. Please help. Amen. Satan, never prayer are for the weak ones who feel helpless. Come on, what can you do about the events on the earth, coronavirus and all the political things that's going on and all the things? What can you do? What can you do as an individual? You can do nothing. But we can pray. And prayer is asking God to help us because we are weak, we feel so helpless. Amen. Sometimes people say, oh, this guy prays strong. Well, I don't pray strong. I'm very weak when I pray. And I pray because I'm weak. I pray because I feel so helpless. But my God never, never fail. He doesn't fail. What he said will come to pass, will come to pass. Because God is a promise keeper. He's not a prom promise breaker. And he will never go against his word. But I ask you tonight, you got the spiritual substance to believe him. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. The substance. What is the substance which I believe in? My Bible. Give God a hand for my Bible. The substance of my faith is the Bible. And the Bible is God's word unto me. It's not just a book. It's God's word unto us. And many times people say, oh, Paul said this and this in the Bible. A person who said that got no clue what your Bible is. It wasn't Paul. It was the Holy Spirit. I hear it so many times. Oh, Paul said this and Paul said this. And Paul, if it was Paul that said it, I will never believe it. Because Paul was as weak as I am. But the Holy Spirit was inspiring Paul. And through Paul, he wrote, the Holy Spirit wrote, wrote down things that we will need today. The Holy Spirit. Your whole Bible is written by the Holy Spirit. He used different men. The Bible says, holy men were carried away by the Spirit. And as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance, they put it down in writing. All those writings were never a man, but the Holy Spirit. 
Give your hands for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I only tell you about my testimonies of last year all the time, then it means I didn't grow from last year to now. But I told you a testimony of yesterday. A child that didn't breathe because of prayer started to breathe. And he was without breath for quite some time. And actually then, sometimes there's, there's trouble. But God is in control when we pray. Give God a hand. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. And all the honor belongs always to him. I don't have to say it. It is so. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. My God is good. He's always good. And I pray. Before I do anything, I pray. I pray before I do things. Because the devil is around and want to trap, trap us and to um, snare us. And the devil is seeking our lives and putting traps out for us. So we should do nothing without praying in Jesus' name. Amen. You go to the mall, you pray in Jesus' name. You go to the mall in Jesus' name. You drive your car there in Jesus' name. Amen. Anything that I do, I do in Jesus' name. When I go diving, I pray, bef I pray, or pray before I dive in Jesus' name. I get onto a horse, I pray, because I know I'm 60, and I don't want my bones to break now. So I pray before, and I always used to pray when I ride a horse. Horse riding is amazing. It's amazing. I started to ride horse again just the other day, and I'm excited about it again. But I need to pray before I ride a horse. Amen. I mean, I get into my car, I need to pray in Jesus' name. Give God a hand for the gift of prayer. Hallelujah. Prayer is a gift given to us. Faith is also a gift given to us in God's grace. No, we couldn't earn it. But we can be obedient and we can ask God and we can seek the Lord. And Jesus said, seek and it will be given to you. Seek, pray, it will be given to you. So we need to seek. Amen. We need those who seek and knock, knock, Knock and it will be open to you. That's what Jesus said. Seek and you will find. So I know it's all grace. But God says to you, seek. It doesn't matter how you feel. Seek. Knock and it will be open to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. You got your part to pray. You got your role to live out. God has got his own role that he said he will do. But in order to get from him what you need to get from him, you need to do your own thing as well, which he commanded you to do. So he says to us, Jesus said, seek and you'll find. Knock and it will be open to you. You do not have because you do not ask. Ask and it will be given to you. Anything is possible. For the man and woman that pray. Anything. Give him a great hand. Amen. <laughs> Faith is all about doing. Go and read Hebrew 11. These people believed God, but they acted on what they believe. That's faith. The guy who only believes, but do not act out what he believes, is a daydreamer and a wishful thinker. And will come to nothing. You read your Bible? You act upon your Bible. When the Bible says you need to love your enemy, you love your enemy. When the Bible says bless those who curse you, you, you need to do that. You bless those who curse you. When the Bible says pray for those who spitefully use you, pray for them. In Jesus' name. Because great will your reward be in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We are part of God's kingdom. Amen. We are sons and daughters. That he lead into salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to read to you here in Hebrew 2 verse, verse uh, 10. It says here, For it was fitting for him, Jesus, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory. He's bringing many sons to glory. That is me and you. Give him a great hand. Amen. 
Alleluia. To make the captain of their salvation perfect. It would seem fit to God to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Anyone that wants to be perfect is going to undergo sufferings. Anyone. Jesus, the chief example. It seemed fit to the Father to make Jesus perfect through suffering. So the Bible also says in another place that he was made perfect by what he suffered. If I want to be perfect, my desire to be as a pastor, to be perfect, being made perfect by God the Father, the price is high. It's not easy because it comes by suffering. I believe in Jesus and what he has done for me. But if I want to be the man that God wants me to be, and I really want to do what he wants me to do, I will also be made perfect by what I suffer. And you need to be made perfect in your forgiveness. You need to be made perfect in your love. And you need to be made perfect also in your giving tonight in Jesus' name. And therefore the Bible says, whatsoever a man sow, he will reap. Hallelujah. And therefore do not sow sparingly, but sow abundantly, and that's what you will receive. There's a couple of things I want in life. I want to be perfect in forgiveness. I want to be perfect in love. I want to be perfect in obedience to my God in Jesus' name. And I want to be perfect in giving. I want, I want to be perfect in giving. And every now and then, God will grant you opportunity to give. And it's amazing. Hallelujah. Take your seat, please. Now, when I prayed for that boxer to be raised from a canvas because he's a Christian, he got up and he went on to win the fight. He really did win the fight. But because the other guy was favorite, that, 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 they made it a draw, and there was a second fight after that. And he, he stood up from the canvas as he was not knocked out. He fought what a brave, courageous fight till the end, and he actually won the fight. But there, there was a draw. And then the second fight, the same thing, the match between the Christian and the guy who believed in ancestral worship. And he, the champion, previous champion said to the Christian, um, Fury, he said to him, I will not only attack you, my spirits will attack you. My demons will attack you. And he said to him, uh-uh. If God is for me, who can be against me? Etc., etc. And the second fight, I tell you, that was a runaway victory for the Christian. Give God a hand. Amen. And then the loser, not a Christian, the ancestral worship guy, was a very good boxer, so by the way. Very, very good boxer. One of the greatest champions ever. His legs, he said, my legs gave away. My legs gave away because God was with Tyson Fury in Jesus' name. Amen. So he went out to win, and that is amazing. And he, and he gave the honor to Jesus. And this is a man who suffered from severe depression and was on, had a drinking problem and came out of it to do what God wanted him to do. And that was so great. And God is good in Jesus' name. Amen. He's always good. He always answers our prayers. i got so many testimonies about prayers that get answered, but you yourself should build up a great testimony in Jesus' name. So you can also tell others about the great things that God is doing in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God is good. From last night, I understand now. I didn't understand this because I put the past quite quickly behind me. If there was a miracle, I forget about it. Normally, I put it behind me, and I don't think about it again until I maybe preach and witness as the Holy Spirit bring it up in my heart. So the rest of the day after that miracle with that boy was so, so, and I experienced the devil attacked me. I didn't think why. And last night, I couldn't sleep because all this evil attack of the devil against me. Ta, 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 ta. And um, obviously, the devil doesn't like us as Christians and especially preachers as well. And the devil, I, real, I didn't realize the devil was very angry at me because I prayed for this child because he wanted this child to be dead. So last night I couldn't sleep. I came, I always do that. Came here and late at night, so by the way, I started to gym. I've got a gym there in the back there. I started to gym and do some exercises and push ups and all sorts of things. And I've got a boxing bag there and I was punching that boxing bag to try to get the frustration out of me. And uh, I tell you, I destroyed that boxing bag, so by the way. And I came into the kitchen to get some water, and the door was closed, and I picked up, hey, what's in this kitchen? 
something evil is in here. And you know, at first you get that, you're a little bit scared. What's in here? And I said, ah, no, I do not have a spirit of fear. I opened the door, and inside of the kitchen here was a huge devil. I thought, what's this thing doing here? And I got spiritual anger in me. What is this thing doing here? I said, God, what is this thing doing here? He cannot be here. This is your church. Now, there were reasons why he could maybe enter. But I understand now, preaching to you, he came for me because he's very angry. Because that child is alive. Give God a hand. Amen. The presence was overwhelming of this big, huge devil. It was not a normal devil. It was a principality. I thought, what's this thing doing here? I started to speak to him. I said, what are you doing here? I rebuked him. I said, get out here in Jesus' name. The Lord rebuked him. What do you want here? Who gave you right to be here? He didn't answer nothing back. But as I prayed and rebuked him, and I prayed, and I started to confess what Jesus did for me, he started to go. And he left. And I was surprised. And last night in my dreams, he also came to attack me. And I wonder why. What did I do wrong? What's, what's going on? Well, I will tell you what's going on. A child that he planned to kill is still breathing today. Give God a hand. Amen. I didn't know why this happened last night. Only now, preaching to her, I realize, hi, hey, it's because of yesterday morning. A child that he planned to kill is breathing today. And he came for me last night. But God again gave me the victory last night. In Jesus' name. Give him a great hand. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen to a master. I'm going to read to you again. Hebrew 2 verse 10. If you mean business with Jesus and you want to make a difference in life, don't expect it's going to happen if God doesn't prepare you sanctify you, purify you, and cleanse you. Like he refines gold. Gold gets refined by fire, and the heat is coming up. Till the gold is in a melting, to a melting degree. And then all the, 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 the unclean things within the gold surface, and they take it off. And the more they do that, the more pure the gold becomes. And our faith is far more precious than gold and silver. If gold and silver get refined like this, same with us. So our champion, our captain of the faith, had to be refined before. And if you're going to be used by God, then he will also refine and sanctify you. In Jesus' name. Amen. For it was fitting for him, I read to you again the same one. For it was fitting for him, the Father. For whom? are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. And we know what Jesus went through. We know what he went through. Not only on the cross. His whole life was a battle. Because the devil wanted to get him to sin, and the devil was unsuccessful. Give your Lord Jesus a great hand. Amen. And then he says in verse 11, no, you need to take note. For, for both ye who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified, which are me and you, are all of one family. Give God a hand. Amen. For which reason he is not ashamed to call us, us, his brothers. Give God a hand. Amen. Saying, I will declare your name to my brethren. Hallelujah. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praises to you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. That's Jesus saying these things. And we are his children. Give God a hand. Amen. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the, in the same. He also became a human. That through death, he might destroy him, the devil, who had the power of death. That is the devil. 
and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed, he does not give aid to the angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abram, which is you. Give God a hand. Amen. Now, how did you become the seed of Abram? You're not a Jew. You're not a Jew. Most of you are not Jews. Almost all of you are not Jews. How can we say you're the seed of Abram? Abram's got two types of seeds. The one, one is the physical descendants of Abram. The other is those who believe in the seed of Abram, which is Jesus. Give God a hand. Amen. So you became the seed of Abram by believing in Jesus. In Jesus, the Bible says, God said to Abram, Abram, in your seed, singular, in your seed, the nations will be blessed. And that seed is Jesus the Christ. And when you believe in Jesus, you are the seed of Abram. Give God a hand. Amen. Whether you're a Jew or not, you are the seed of Abram. If you believe in Jesus, I'm going to say it again. The Father said unto Abram, God said to Abram, in your seed, singular, the nations will be blessed. And that seed is Jesus Christ. That seed was David. And the descendants, David. And Jesus is called the son of David. And when you believe in Jesus, he's the son of David, he's the son of man, and he's the son of God, and he was God, and he became a man. And he went back to heaven, taking in his place as God. When you believe in Jesus, you are the seed of Abraham. Because God said to Abraham, in your seed, singular, the nations will be blessed. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. So you are the seed of Abraham. So all the promises that God made to Abraham, guess what? They are yours. You know what great promises God made to Abraham? Huh? Huh? Those promises are yours as well. You need to take hold of them in faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's why the Bible says, those who were not sons will be sons. Amen. Those who previously were not children of God now are children of God. Amen. By faith in Jesus Christ, you are now children of Abraham. And God made great promises to Abraham. You need to take hold of them tonight. People who stream, you need to take hold of that promises that God made to Abram because you are the seed of Abram by faith. And faith is a greater reality than physical things. You are a greater reality of the seed of Abram than all the Jews in Israel that is not Christians. All the Jews in Israel who rejected Jesus and still reject Jesus. Faith is a greater reality than physical that you can see and touch. For me, angels, in the spiritual realm, and Jesus, is more real than this thing that I can touch here. It's a greater reality, the spiritual things. And you, as the seed of Abraham, is a greater reality. And, and, see, and you, you are a greater witness of the seed of Abraham than all the Jews that live in Israel that doesn't believe in Jesus. You're a greater reality of the seed of Abram, than all the Jews that live in Israel that doesn't believe in Jesus. Because faith is stronger than fleshly things. Spiritual things are far stronger than physical things. Amen. But the Bible says that all Israel will be saved in one day. Give your hand for that. Amen. At the end. At the end, but speak about now. Hallelujah. God is good. In Jesus' name. Tonight you're going to take hold of your promise. People who stream, you're going to take hold of your promises. You're going to take hold of your promises tonight. Tonight they're going to pray for you. And the Bible says, where two or more agree on a thing, so don't think you're going to pray by yourself. Where two or more agree on something, it will be so. Amen. That's why I'm going to pray for you. For those who want me to pray for them. Because well, some people don't want me to pray for them. They're scared or something. I do not know what. But people who stream, I got you in your homes. Hallelujah. 
wherever you are and you don't like me and you're scared of me, I bless you in Jesus' name. I love you. God bless you in Jesus' name. And the promises that God made to Abraham, they are yours. They fill your homes and they fill you as well in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, thank you that you fill the homes with your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 There was one day man sitting there at the back. He thought, if I want to pray for him, he's going to run out there. You don't have to be scared. When I pray for you, God will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, come, those who want prayer. Those who want prayer. Come and sit with this, not the ex. Yeah, there, I'll pray for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I will call upon the Lord God of heaven to touch you. In Jesus' name. Amen, Isabel. Ek nie gewet, jy is hier vanavond. Ek weet nie, want ek so gedink nie. Ek is baie blij, sê so. Amen. Ek gee nou nou kans gee net om vir die Heere dankie te sê saam met my. Sê so, 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 so. Ons bid beskerming vir al ons kinders, daarniekie specifiek in Jesus naam. Amen. Amen. Ek gaan gauw die ding afsit. Halleluja. Dankie Jesus. Bid beskerming in Jesus naam. Dankie Jesus. Al die kinders, specifiek daarin ook, al die kleinkinders, in die naam van Jesus Christus. Kinders en kleinkinders, in Jesus naam. Stik jy arm sy. Wat het jy gedoen? Amen. Maar jy het my weggestoot. Halleluja. Bis hier. Kijk my. Gelukkig is ek nie baie bang ou nie. In Jesus naam. Amen. Halleluja. Yes, what can I pray for you? I want you last night. Come and stand that side. Poor Panash, he was here last night and I told him about that devil. And he didn't close one eye, let me tell you that. <laughs> but asked, did you sleep last night? No, nothing. <laughs> Jesus! In the mighty name of Jesus.
In the name of Jesus. Is what? Thank you. Look at my eyes. Bukusi bichesi lana. Thank you, Lord, for total healing in Jesus' name. Amen. What can I feel about my throat? Beskerm, jong. God is goed. Amen, bid vir beskerm, kom. Mm. Met, in die naam van Jesus, Heer, ons bid vir die stilies, dat sy goed sal doen, dat sy nie sal opgee nie, wat sy sal vaststaan en sal doen wat sy moet doen, in Jesus naam. Amen. 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 Kom. Sit op jou kop. Dank Jesus. Wat kan ek vir julle bid? Kom hier. Amen. And amen and amen. Amen. Thank you. Let me come here. Thank you. I can't come back now. Okay. Clement, can you please come and help? Where are you? Clement, Clement, wherever you are. Sepa, are you going to help me? Clement, come and help my Maruti, please. Thank you. That's it. What can I feel with? In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Meneer, what can I bid for you? Who can I man? Waar bly hulle? Is dit? Boer hulle ook saam? Ok, great. Ek bid vir jou vir finansies. Vader, ek dank jy vir financiële deurbra, dat die boerderij geseend sal wees, en alles wat tegen hulle staan, sal val, en sal nie voorspoedig wees nie in die naam van Jesus Christus. Heer, ek seen hulle, en alles wat hulle aanvat in Jesus naam. Amen. Heer, ek seen jy my vriend. Hoe gaan met jou? Hmm. Extra. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Yes. Let's go now. I'm better scared. Could you say that? Um. All is to unfang. But God's favor will hear. Ah, say. That's the year is a solving up your year. That's not a powerful. Ja, die Heer het een plan, hoor. Die Heer het een lekker plan. Halleluja. Amen. Halleluja. How are you guys? Where is your brother? Is this your brother? No. Good to meet you, brother. Thank you. What can I pray? Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Tell us. What can we pray?
What do you do for a living? Okay. Okay, in mobile all now. Area. Okay. And you? You're saying? Okay, okay. All right. Come, let's pray. Stand in. Stay on the line. The line's name is Grace Line, okay? So stand on Grace Line. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let me stand this side and the people can there see you. Turn, turn around. Thank you. Look at my eyes. I pray for you for the success that you need from Jesus. Thank you. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for new breakthrough, new doors that open in the name of Jesus. And whatever the devil tried to do, he will not be successful in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Breakthrough for you, my friend, in Jesus' name. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you, friend. Amen. Come again, please. You're so welcome here, please. Amen. Sepu, we got that man's phone number. Remember now. What is over here for? Alleluia, I bid for you, and I bid for the booty, and you know him for Jesus, for bias and Jesus no more. Kijk in my ear. Jesus, amen. What can I feel about, sister? Jesus, what is so? My friend, what can I bet for you? I hear you. I'm still not so. I bet so much of your kind. That I spend a cup of gift. I don't sell track. Here, thank you. What is it about? Okay, come on, bet for him. You're still not in form, nah. So his child is bitten by a spider. We pray for him. He's standing for his child in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Hello, how are you? Good, what can I pray for you? Come, please. Come stand here. Father, I thank you that you will heal her body. Nothing will be wrong. She will be healed completely in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Let me tell you, she had a heart problem. God is healing her now. By His miraculous powers. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. And every devil will leave her in Jesus' name. This was a demon that attacked her heart. But she will be free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's what's making my ministry, this ministry, God entrusted me, so worthwhile. When I see people get free like this, ay, this is the best. Thank you, Jesus. Give Jesus a hand, please. Amen. The one who do the healing is Jesus. Amen. What can I pray for you? Huh?
werken in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'll speak to you. Thank you. Come. You made it. Both of you. Woo! Amen. Thank you so much. Jesus, you are great. Huh? Prayer works. Amen. Look at my eyes. God is good. And God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Shaina, what can we pray? Mm. Okay. How are you? Amen. Okay. Yes. Come here. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come here, my friend. How are you, man? In Jesus' name. Amen. Come here, Yes, what kind of fear do? Yes! What kind of fear with? Amen. Come on, come on. What kind of fear do? What kind of fear do? Yes, I know. You're tired of your mistakes, but God is the one who will do it. He will remove that from you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, relax. Relax and give everything over to God. And tonight, you must have a good night's rest. Okay? Have a good night's rest tonight. Relax. God will do it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God will do it. You must worry about nothing. Worry about nothing. Just go and sleep. And have peace. Okay? Just have peace. Drugs. As you find worry, you come here for you. Amen. Come. Come, come. Patience. Patience. What can I pray for you? Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. Well, I bless you. I bless you with this festive season now. Look at my eyes. And your future may be great in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Everything will fall into place for this man, this child of yours. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Everything will fall in favor with, for him. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You change fear into faith. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. What's your name, friend? And you love Jesus. And you're born again. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. It will go well. It will go well, okay? Yes. For, for what? At the same case. But he forgave you. But the family didn't forgive you. So the family is taking you to court. I pray that God will soften their hearts. Father, I pray that you soften their hearts. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you will soften their hearts. Amen, Tsepu. And I pray now for grace and favor for him in the name of Jesus. Because God, he asked you, thank you that you will help him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now have peace and keep on praying, okay? Amen. Take his fellow number. We can contact and see what's going on, okay? Okay, it's good to meet you. And thank you for being honest. We ask God. Now we will see what God will do. Amen. Amen. I love you. Amen. God bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you heal a mother in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. People who stream this prayer request, we're going to pray gladly for you. And God's going to answer your prayer. Because you got faith. We believe and you believe. We believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Cedric, you need one point to graduate. They're busy remarking. We pray now for favor and grace on you. In Jesus' name. one point, we pray for this grace and favor. In Jesus' name, Cedric, we pray for grace and favor here. But remember, you need to always give honor to God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Clement, I pray protection for you. For your family and your baby, I pray protection, Tsepu. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name. Clement, Amen. Grace and mercy in Jesus' name. Capella, your daughter's got stomach ache. We pray for healing for her in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray healing for you. You got chronic shoulder pain. I pray for you also for healing in the name of Jesus. And I pray for your protection on the road in Jesus' name. Protection on the road, healing for your body, healing for your child's stomach, in the name of Jesus. Your shoulder as well. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Maria, you got pain in your shoulder and your neck. So we pray now that God will heal you, Maria, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Someone anonymous, person anonymous, you ask for deliverance because you, um, you believed in the wrong things like astrology and you went to mediums and all these things. You ask for forgiveness. I tell you, if you ask forgiveness, God forgive you. You did the wrong things. You went to wrong sources for help, mediums, astrology and all these things. And tarot card readings, you ask forgiveness for that. 
I tell you tonight, God forgive you because you ask forgiveness in Jesus' name. But I want to say to you, turn away from that. Never, never go back there. Because we don't believe in the God of luck. We don't believe in the God of fortune telling. We believe in Jesus Christ and we believe in the prophetic spirit of the Bible. In Jesus' name. So I break this over you. Now I say those demons will leave you. Those fortune telling demons and sorcerer demons will leave you now. Those who came through the tarot cards, the Lord rebuke you, Satan, out. Out of his life in Jesus' name. Go. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. God is good. Give him a hand. Amen. Person anonymous, you are forgiven. You are forgiven, God. Love you. In Jesus' name. You ask God for forgiveness, so he forgave you. And you are delivered in Jesus' name. Give God a hand for that. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet, please. Those who stream, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Bless everyone around you. In your homes as well. Bless everyone around you. Bless the Lord, please. Hallelujah. Some of you receive deliverance, definitely. Some of you receive blessing. Maintain your blessing. Maintain your deliverance by lining up your life with God's word. Hallelujah. Be rooted in his words and live by his words. Remember, through faith as to act upon your, what you believe. To act upon the words of Jesus. When you act upon the words of Jesus, there will always be power. Like you've seen. Amen. Amen, Douglas. Douglas, come so. Douglas, in Jesus' name. Say to come In Jesus' name. Amen. Marie, come so. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God is a good God. Give him a great hand. Amen. Those who stream, may God protect you. May he keep his hand upon you. In the name of Jesus. May God keep you safe. In Jesus' name. Till we see Friday evening or Sunday morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Or Sunday evening. Hallelujah. Tepo, are you okay? Douglas. al -Zarach. Hallelujah. Okay, say to number, I release you into the blessing of the Lord. When I see you again, I'll find you in great blessing. Please remain in blessing. I'll see you again in a blessing. Amen. God bless you, my visitor friends. Amen. Give God a hand for the visitors here. Thank you. They're visitors, but they are brothers and our sisters, these two. Amen. And these two as well. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless you in Jesus' name. We bless you with God bring to pass all the things that you pray and ask of him in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I release you now into God's faith. I'll see you again in blessing and faith. Enjoy your evening in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.